Um, Janine's very, very nervous now we're here. Like, if we can't sleep there, we're well and truly screwed. Yeah, so we're gonna head off into the darkness. I'm gonna put the camera away. I've never been more soaked in all my life. I can't get us booked into anywhere. I can't find anywhere for us to go to. It's something that we're gonna have to tackle uh, tomorrow. Welcome back to the channel. We're Janine and Liam Day, a married couple and full-time van lifers from the UK. Just two days ago, we were dealt with the biggest blow we've had in a long time as our camper van and home, despite having just had a new engine fitted a few months ago, had broken down once again, with mechanics saying it might need another new engine. It feels like another dark time we are having to pass through as a couple, and with our home being locked motionless in a garage in the south of England, we have to make a big decision. Do we stick around, homeless, and wait nervously for weeks for the work to be done on our van? Or is this just another test we must go on in life and in it a potential opportunity for personal growth as always we go with our hearts on this one and this is what happens next welcome back to the channel if you didn't already know me and my wife are full-time van lifers in the uk full-time travelers and have been for almost three years now um, what we're about to do now is going to be a really bad idea or a really good idea or maybe a bit of both. Either way, it's going to be a challenge and the last couple of days have been the biggest challenges we've faced so far since doing uh, this whole sort of full-time travel thing, full-time van life thing. As many of you guys know, we have a camper van, we live in a camper van full-time. It has been nothing but problems. As much joy has brought us, it's been nothing but problems. And just three days ago, that camper van broke down and unfortunately, uh, was looking like a head gasket had gone, which is one of the worst things you could hear that happens to your engine. Uh, it turns out that the head gasket has gone, and for many sort of people who are driving sort of big vans or old vans or whatever, it's not the worst news ever because or it's not surprising. But to us, it was uh, it was very surprising and it hurt a lot because we've only just paid for a brand new engine, reconditioned engine, over winter, so just a few months ago, and uh, yeah. We weren't expecting that. So there's a lot of bits and stuff and things involved. And to be honest with you, we booked this before we broke down, a uh, few days before we broke down. It was a very, very last minute thing, but it's something that I've wanted to do for the last 20 years since I read one book. And that book was called The Pilgrimage. Many of you might have heard the, hear the word pilgrimage and know exactly what we're about to do now. Um, maybe the what's happened so far is just our first test and our first challenge on this massive adventure we're about to go on as i said i really really hope that this was the right move um the reason why we were we are still going on it is because our camper van and our home even though it's got the most serious things about to happen to it is stuck in a garage uh, it can't go anywhere the garage can't look at it for at least two to three weeks and the work that needs to be done on it is so big that sitting in the south coast of England, staying in B&Bs, costing a fortune, is gonna, co is gonna do no good to us whatsoever. So we thought, this morning we weren't gonna go, then we said, sod it, let's just go and do it. And we ran to the airport, we ran to the train station, ran to the airport, and we are now about to go and do it. So, I'm gonna explain what this big challenge is. It's gonna last for five weeks. It's gonna be the busiest, biggest physical challenge we've ever done, physical. Um, probably the biggest mental challenge we've ever done, as well as owning a camper van. Um, and spiritual challenge as well, as all these things are, because you don't know what direction uh, this is going to take you in life. So, wish us luck. I'm going to explain more about the pilgrimage that we're about to do that's going to take five weeks as we move forward and give you all of the details. But for now, we've got to go and catch a plane to the south of France, to Biarritz, on our pre-booked flight to start off a massive, 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 probably our biggest adventure yet. I can't tell what's wrong or right. Should I go without saying goodbye? All I know is I need to be somewhere else to set me free. I don't know what to do now. Need to figure it out, but I don't know how. I hope the wind will carry me and take me away to where I should be. Are you happy? Yeah. Me too! I can see I have a really lovely paparazzi there. Huh? Yeah. Yes, you exactly. The lady with the, I don't know what kind of color it is, but with, with the mask there. We take off 
and despite us about to embark on one of the biggest adventures of our lives, we couldn't stop thinking about the seriousness of what we have left behind, hoping that whatever happens when the plane doors open once again is the right decision. Okay, this is Tom. Tom has just been our first sort of uh, information source about the pilgrimage because we are very underprepared. But this man is the man to uh, to ask about it. So nice to meet you, mate. Thank you very much. Yeah, nice to meet you. Bob. Cheers, Tom. Yeah, yeah, we'll see you on the road, eh? I hope so. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. Cool. See Cheers. you later, Paul. See, see ya. ya. Oh my god, okay, so we're here, we've got the lowdown from Tom, I think his name was. He gave us some really good information actually, and um, he's just made me so excited about this pilgrimage that we're going on. So we've arrived, we're in Biritz, and we're going to catch an Uber to our hotel. And in the morning, we're then going to catch either a bus or a train to where we need to go to start this pilgrimage. And uh, yeah, I'm just very excited. After everything that we've been through these past couple of days, um, I've, I was really low actually when we were going to the airport. And I don't know, the flight and talking to Tom and getting excited and being here, um, yeah, just has made me forget about what's going on back home a little bit and yeah I'm just going to concentrate on this now. So hotel, sleep and then it all begins tomorrow. And that's exactly what we did. We booked an Uber to take us to our accommodation in Biritz. We headed to a place called Quick Palace, which in the evening you self check in. The room was very basic, clean, a funky shower head to also use as a sink tap. We were so happy to arrive and tired from the journey. We headed to bed ready for a busy day tomorrow. Good morning from the Quick Palace bit like a motel, uh, strange place, um, but the cheapest place around. We'll leave the prices of um, a lot of the main things uh, on our journey in case any of you want to do the pilgrimage as well. So this place was 50 quid, 50 pounds, 50 English pounds. It was all right, it's a bit stuffy, very, very basic. The, sh the, the shower scenario was quite funny because the shower doubled up as the sink tap as well and it dribbled out. So I washed my hair this morning, it took me ages. Janine didn't even bother trying. Uh, anyway, it's a necessary step along the way. We've got one more place to go to, and that is where the pilgrimage starts. We're catching a taxi now, then a train, and the train is just an hour long, and then that's where the pilgrimage starts. And when we get there, I promise you, I'm gonna tell you all about what's ahead of us. Get in, get in. So apparently, the traffic, <laughs> so apparently the traffic is pretty bad in this area. So we've left it 20 minutes to get to the bus station, but, the, uh, the driver looks a little bit panicked, so uh, we'll see. What's he like? Having only 20 minutes to get to the station, the driver did his best to get us there on time, which we were so thankful for. We headed into the station, grabbed a ticket, now looking forward to our journey south to St. John Pierre de Port, which is where we'll begin the adventure on foot. So the place we're going to now is called Jean Pierre de P or just Jean-Pierre I'm not quite sure um, and we're heading there on this tiny little train I've literally never seen a train like this before it's like a little rocket train or something it's tiny I imagine it's gonna just shoot us straight there really fast but yeah anyway in 10 minutes we're gonna grab some coffees and get on there and go St. John Pierre de Port. That's the one. Is that right? Yeah. Um, and we have just got off the train. We're actually following the other pilgrims because we presume that they're going to the places where you need to go to start this trail. Um, we've got a few things that we need to get before we can begin. So 
We're just following that we're going with the flow. So here we are at the pilgrim office about to get a passport for the trip. This passport is the key to proving we have completed the pilgrimage. Each place you pass, accommodation, cafes, churches and more, will stamp this passport to show your journey. Without this we cannot receive the certificate at the end. You also cannot stay in the pilgrim lodges without one, so it's the very first place that pilgrims flock to before heading to their chosen accommodation. We got our very first stamp in the book before going to find somewhere to put our heads down for the evening. We were there before check-in, so the rules are that you put your bag down to save your place in the queue, which we did. Okay, so this is where we're stopping for the evening. This is called a Pilgrim's Hostel or an Alberg. Alberga? Alberga. Something like that. Um, it's for, mainly for pilgrims and it's or only for pilgrims and it's first come first served, hence why there's a queue of people waiting outside. Um, it's not opening till, we don't know whether it's one, two or three o'clock. Um, but our bag's down anyway and Janine's waiting and meeting some nice people. Um, so, you're probably wondering what the pilgrimage is. Um, it's, we're referring to it as a pilgrimage. Many people refer to it as the Camino de Santiago, um, which is uh, the way of St. James. And it's a pilgrimage, a holy walk, one of three pilgr holy pilgrimages in the world. Uh, the top ones, one of them being Bethlehem. And we're very, very privileged and very, very fortunate to be here just about to start it. But get this. It's a 700 kilometer hike. We're going to be walking every day between probably between 15 and 20 miles per day. Um, it's going to be physically so challenging. Um, I don't think we quite understand what we're putting out about to step into. Um, Janine's very, very nervous now we're here. Uh, I'm very excited. We're worried about how much pack, how much stuff we've got. Uh, we're carrying a lot more because we're filming um, and you're supposed to bring very little on here because you're walking so many miles but we're bringing so much camera equipment and stuff so we can actually uh, YouTube it um, so that's gonna be one huge challenge but really all you're supposed to bring is your uh, spirit your soul and your enthusiasm for it uh, your dedication to it your willingness to be open-minded uh, spiritually religiously whatever we're not religious people but we're definitely open-minded um, and also a pilgrim passport which you saw us get just a little while ago which is that pilgrim passport basically um, tells all of the establishments along the way that we are in fact pilgrims on a trail a holy trail uh, and to look after us a little bit basically so that met, gets us into the public hostels uh, host, public hostels we believe are very very cheap um, but very sort of basic uh, and ancient um, as the walk is itself and the uh, the other thing what we need is a scallop um, shell and that shell i think is just a symbol of saint james um so everyone you see on the trail will be carrying a shell on their book rucksacks so people can see who the pilgrims are and what have you it might have more meaning and it might have more uses as we go down the line i've also heard someone else talk about that you drink wine from it or something i have no idea what that's all about um and the other thing was to bring some stones um from back home which we did and we remembered to do uh, amongst all of the chaos. Um, as you know, we've had a big challenge already and we, and we pretty much weren't coming to this yesterday morning. And now we're here in Southern France, ready to trek through the Pyrenees. And tomorrow, after we've checked in and we've seen what the crack is tomorrow, we've got a 27 kilometer hike through the Pyrenees into Spain. This is Basque country and we're going to Spain. Anyway, there's so much going on. Um, we All we plan to do, we've done zero training, zero preparation. All we plan to do was get to this point here and we've done it. So that is our first obstacle and we've done it. Ticks off the list. The next one is the actual trek itself. 700 kilometers, 500 miles, whatever it is. Whew, it's gonna be hard going, but I'm really, really looking forward to it. Whilst Janine's nervous, I'm a little bit too very excited. Whilst waiting to check into our first pilgrim hostel, we went for a wander around the town of St. John Pierre de Port. Founded in the 12th century, is known as one of the prettiest villages in France, in the Navarre region, and is just eight kilometers from the Spanish border. We couldn't believe how quaint it was, and it made us realize that over the next few weeks, as pilgrims, we'll have the opportunity to visit so many ancient towns like this, that as tourists, we would never usually get to see. Saint Jean is full of cute independent shops that you would find all over France, from bakeries to bars and cafes. It also has little hiking shops so that pilgrims can pick up the last minute essentials, from hiking poles to maps. But despite our last minuteness with the trip, we thought we might have everything we need for now. 
We then popped into a traditional bakery to grab some coffee, which timed perfectly with a wild visitor who clearly liked the smell of fresh cakes and bread. So we made it in through the checking in process. The queue was getting very big as it, as it was going along, as the time was progressing. Um, this actually, the room that we're in here with the ensuite is um, at their only private room in this whole Pil Pilgrim's Hostel. So we feel very, very fortunate to get it because we were so uh, ahead in the queue because we got the train so early this morning. Really pleased we did that. Um, also, uh, we didn't get a chance to sort out any of our stuff. Most of our stuff isn't charged because of the, the mo motel sort of place we stayed at last night was rubbish. Um, so now it's given us the opportunity to sort of get ourselves organized for tomorrow. This cost 30 euros, this room, which is cheaper than the one we were staying at last night by a mile. And apparently they get cheaper as they go along. We won't, I doubt we're gonna get another private room like this. Um, I think it's gonna be bunk beds uh, in bit large dorms from now on, which is cool. We knew, we knew that it would be something like that. Um, and they cost 12 euros, this cost 30 euros. And as we leave and go, we move, hike into Spain, they're gonna get cheaper apparently. Food's involved, this place gets, you get free breakfast with it as well, so not bad. Um, exclusively for, pil for pilgrims, so it's really, really good. We're gonna learn more about that as we go along. Anyway, another reason why this is good um, is because tomorrow we are about to embark on our longest journey uh, and the hardest one for the whole, probably the whole trek, so we're told. And uh, there might be some more surprises along the way. Tomorrow we're doing, originally we're doing 27 kilometers plus in one day walking with all of our gear. Um, but we found out as I was walking, looking, trying to find an ATM, we saw someone that we met yesterday, Tom, and he said, have you heard all of the accommodation is booked up for the next destination, the next location? The, uh, the problem with all of this is that we, there's nowhere to stop between here and the 27 kilometer mark. So we are going to have to, by the sounds of it, walk on further past the, where everyone else is gonna be stopping at and keep walking. So it's gonna end up being 30 kilometers plus. God knows how, where, when it's gonna be, but we've gotta keep walking until we find accommodation. Um, the other uh, thing that, the, the other potential sort of problem that's been thrown into this is that tomorrow is gonna be a challenge anyway. We are carrying lots of stuff. We've done no training um, and I probably can handle it. We are trying to limit the bags down for Janine but for Janine, because we're walking such a long distance, you know, we're gonna be walking the distance of a marathon, maybe more. Um, I'm thinking now we need to find a way of getting, doing it so Janine doesn't have to carry a backpack tomorrow and I carry a backpack and maybe we get some stuff sent to the first hostel. I've seen a service down there for eight euros that sends bags to where you want it to go. Maybe that's an option. Otherwise, I'm, I'm wondering if it's, if it's actually possible. Um, Janine, Janine's, you know, a, sort of a dainty little thing. <laughs> and uh, I, don't want to, I don't want it to get completely ruined on the first day from this. We've got to look after it. It's a long old five week trek. So we don't want to wreck it on the first day and have to go home. Anyway, I'm gonna explore that possibility and uh, work tomorrow out because it's a little bit daunting right now. Okay, so. I'm kind of with Liam on this idea. I wasn't, so he's had to convince me because I kind of want to carry my own bag. Um, but for the sake of just getting tomorrow over and done with, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go for it, I think. I've actually managed to bring the weight down of my bag, so I am happy with the weight of it, um, kind of. I'm still carrying mine and Liam's stuff um, because he's carrying all the technical stuff. So I'm still like doubling up on what I should be carrying really but anyway I'm happy with the weight of it and I hopefully I can do the rest of the trek with um with the weight of this bag and I think I need to do a day to understand this pilgrimage really also so. it's it's going to be over 26 miles Janine like honestly you, just to walk it alone without a backpack is going to be a hell of a challenge for yeah. you yeah so don't worry I know I just feel a little bit like I'm cheating you're not you're, there's nothing there's nothing written down to say that you've got to carry a backpack your husband that's what your husband's here for as well and let's ship let's just ship it eight euros be the best six quid we've ever spent <laughs> well there we go so i'm taking snacks and water and anything that we'd like desperately need for a day's hike also we've been given these kind of nets to go over the beds just i don't know why but bed we've bugs. done it liam thinks it's for bed bugs and we bought this um, sleeping bag liner here just to sleep in. We don't know how cold it's gonna be. 
Um, so we've also got blankets up here if we need to. So hopefully we're gonna be nice and warm. Um, I don't know, who knows? After grabbing a hot shower and trying to prepare as much as we can for tomorrow, we sat down outside for a bite to eat, which Liam made in the guest house kitchen. It was actually really nice, seitan rice and cooked vegetables. It made us wonder if we'd be able to find plant-based food in rural and mountainous villages elsewhere in France and Spain. We ate up and walked to the 16th century citadel for a view of the valley, where we met an English woman on her own so invited her for a drink. We headed to one of the many bars and coincidentally met Tom a long route who was another cheerful Brit on their own and who we met on the plane on the way over here. Tom has walked the Camino before and was a great source of knowledge. We shared laughs and banter as the sun set over this beautiful French town. But the main topic of conversation was the 27 plus kilometer mountain hike waiting for us early the next morning over the Pyrenees mountains. I felt the nerves and just prayed that we are physically up to the challenge. off into the mountains in the darkness of the early French morning we have no idea what's waiting for us ahead. Both feeling determined we officially begin our 791 kilometer pilgrimage and ready for whatever challenges it might bring. We were lucky to be up high for the sunrise which looked magical as it rose over the Pyrenees casting light upon mountain faces, pastures and vineyards. It was a sight that Liam said he'd been waiting 20 years to see. We still had our broken camper van at home, Morgan on our mind. But right now we feel lucky to be here amongst the wonderful stillness. There might have been many points in our lives where we could have done this pilgrimage, but right now we couldn't think of any time more perfect than today. The Camino de Santiago offers each pilgrim a chance to connect with something higher than themselves. But in order to reach God, the universe, or whatever you call that magic or divine essence in life that you cannot explain, the pilgrim must first get past themselves. The 800 kilometer path is thus divided into three sections related to its impact on the pilgrim undertaking it, body, mind and spirit. The first section of the path is connected to the body. As we pass through the mountains on the long days of hiking, walking on average 20 plus kilometers per day, our body will hurt, ache and bleed. Yet each day we must move on despite our weakness and injuries and have faith that our body will heal. Liam and I admittedly both had doubts as we climbed the steep mountains and the wind blew fiercely against the side of our bodies. This trail has claimed many lives and unfortunately some in recent times. We can see the danger of the way everywhere. Our steps slowed down as we dug deep, looking forward to reaching the peak so we can enjoy the descent and allow our hips to get some recovery from a day of mostly incline walking with a heavy backpack. After a short food break of dried sliced apples and nuts, we reached the Spanish border but we could have easily missed it as it had no ego whatsoever. So believe it or not, this is the French-Spanish border <laughs> and we're just walking across it, aren't we, Janine? Yes, we are just about to go into Spain. Go on, hop, in, hop into Spain, Janine, go on. See, I'm in France and Janine's in Spain. <laughs> France, Spain. Salut. Francais, Espanol. <laughs> Uh, buenos dias. Buenos dias. Yeah. I say it's bonjour. Yeah. Bonjour. Buenos dias. Bonjour. So I'm going to come back to France now and get my stuff. Get a few, <laughs> few more stamps and a passport. Oh, congratulations. Yeah. Now we're going to be in Spain for the rest of the trip. 
hiking across the northern Spain all the way to Santiago, which back there said it's just less than 800 kilometers. So here we go. <laughs> this is a fun trip. We had some challenges with the wind today, but it's all good from here on in. Yes. Yeah. One, one step at a time. Yes. And enjoy the journey. Fantastic. Amazing. So well Thank said. You so, so well said. What's your name? Dan. Dan from United States. Dan from United States. Well, from the England. From England. Oh. Thank okay. you, sir. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Under the tree. I don't know why I'm finding it so exciting that I was in France and now I'm in Spain. I'm so happy to be in Spain though. I did love France, obviously. It's absolutely beautiful, but um, yeah, really, really happy to now be in Spain. And uh, maybe I can speak a little bit more because my French is awful. I know how to say a few more things in Spanish. I can't remember what that is. Your Francais est merde. Merde, merde. Merde. I can't remember Spanish, but I'll, I'll pick it up. Beer is. Watch out! Ooh, ther cerveza. Ther cerveza. Cerveza. Oh, they're gonna hate us. Cerveza. Ce or cerveza. Cerveza. I don't know. Okay, so this is most people's uh, destination. We've just walked 27 kilometers or thereabouts. And uh, most people stay over here. And there's a monastery over here. Uh, unfortunately, they're full. So we're having to walk onwards for another five or six kilometers, which is gonna be, we're gonna feel every single one of those kilometers. So we're gonna eat something and then, uh, and then move on. Since all we'd eaten today was dried apple and nuts, we made a quick snack of avocado and rye bread with olives before going the extra distance hoping to find somewhere to lay our heads for the night. Our first stop was fully booked so we continued on to the next. Okay, so we're hiding under a tree, it's absolutely just started to chuck it down for the first time um, and we're about to go and find out if the third place on the list um, has got any places for us to sleep tonight. If we can't sleep there, we're well and truly screwed. I've never been more soaked in all my life. I know. That was serious and unlucky, <laughs> unlucky that was, wasn't it? I am absolutely drenched. But we're here, we are here, aren't we? Dry for the whole thing. The last five minutes, absolutely soaked. Yeah. And we have got very small amount of clothes with us as well. Yeah. Right, let's see if we can get in, eh? Yeah, fingers crossed. Keeping our fingers crossed, we headed into the hostel rural Haizia. Soaked through and exhausted, we prayed for a bed, and luck was on our side. We bagged the last two beds in this alberg and headed to our first dorm of the trip. The room was very nice with a collection of lovely characters whom we'll be sharing snores with, or Liam will at least. The hostel was really nice with a living room and some cosy sofas, which we relaxed on with a cup of tea until dinner. It's Cool, so we are checked in. Um, we took the last two beds in the whole hostel, which I'm so pleased about, but so um, sort of gutted for anyone turning up, which there's been people turning up and people ringing up. Um, it's very, very busy on the, on the trail. Uh, apparently all the way to, um, we've just found out all the way to the, like the next big place, the next city or something. So we've got another couple of days of trying to find accommodation. So it should be interesting, but this place is really nice actually. Um, so we checked in, had a shower, we're in a dorm. Um, we've got the last two beds, so we're on two separate bunk beds, which is okay. Um, we're eating tonight, it costs 12 euros. We're eating tonight uh, something called a pilgrim dinner. Uh, it's basically a, um, uh, a sort of free course meal that they make en masse. Um, and they're managing, they're managing to make it plant-based for us as well, which is amazing. So we, we can't turn that down. Um, and so that's happening in a couple of hours. Uh, Janine to sleep. Um, we're both aching like mad. Um, just really happy to be out of the rain because it's still raining. Um, I really hope it stops for tomorrow. Um, and then, and yeah, that's it. <laughs> Because we're pilgrims, are we pilgrims? Pilgrims, yes. Because we're pilgrims, 
we get um, for 12 euros we can get a full like meal and it's called a pilgrim's meal and all of the pilgrims they sit together and they eat this lovely food I don't know what we're gonna get um, but yeah I'm really excited you get a glass of wine as well so <laughs> Buen Camino. Buen Camino. Buen Camino. Mi amor por ti es puro fuego. Candela. It's chilled. Vigado, vigado. Perfecto. Okay, so it's lights out time in this uh, public alberga, albergue. Uh, I'm going to get the pronunciation right of that. Public Pilgrim Hospital. Anyway, um, we've had such a good day. Um, our legs are like jelly. Uh, we're going to sleep very well tonight, hopefully. Um, we've had a nice evening as well. That Pilgrim's Dinner thing is all over the Camino Santiago. So there's going to be a few more of those when they're about, hopefully. Meeting people from all over the world, having some wine, eating some food. Fantastic. But we've got something hanging over us. The accommodation situation is a bit of a problem, to be honest with you. Um, we were told before, sort of, uh, in the first town, St. Jean, Pierre Port, that um, pilgrims get public hostels, you wait in a queue, you get a bed, that sort of thing. It's turning out that everything's fully booked. Um, there's a lot of people walking about, not being able to find accommodation. Uh, we managed to get it today, very, very pleased about that. It involved us walking six kilometers more than anybody else, um, and it was worth it. But tomorrow, we face the same problem, and I can't get us booked into anywhere. I can't find anywhere for us to go to. There's a lot of people walking this trail at the moment, even though it's sort of shoulder season, it's supposed to be the best time to come because the kids are back at school and stuff, and there's less people. It's something that we're gonna have to tackle uh, tomorrow. It might mean that we have to walk huge distances again which Janine's not too thrilled about and even reminds of an honest review we need a sort of slight semi easy rest day anyway it is what it is it's part of the journey it's part of the adventure um, and I'm looking forward to it whatever it throws at us it's a, it's a spiritual quest apparently so let's just see what happens thanks for watching if you like the content please don't forget to subscribe hit the like button and we'll see you next time on the Camino Santiago the pilgrimage Time's just begun Oh, we know what we have Let's hold on tight Found what we're looking for in life Call us crazy But things are finally right With you and I, the future